Um, hey guys, uh, just a quick video here about GCDs. Um, so, I just kind of wanted to motivate, uh, we kind of want, one thing we want to do is understand um, when you factor a number, how, like, what are the, like, how do the divisors of that number factor, right? So in this case, I've written 36, I've factored it as 4 times 9, or 2 squared times 3 squared. We want to make sure, um, we want to check, like, um, basically we want to see how do the divisors of 36 like compare to the, this factorization. You know, so I've written out all the divisors of 36, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 9, 12, 18, and 36. And you can see, you can write it as, so I've written it as the number in red is a number that divides 2 squared and a number in like gold divides 3 squared, right? So each, num each divisor can be written uniquely as a product of a divisor of 2 squared and a divisor of 3 squared. Right, so we see 1 is 1 times 1, 2 is 2 times 1, so a divisor of 2 squared, a divisor of 3 squared, 4 is 2 squared times 1, 3 is 1 times 3, and so on, right? So like each divisor has a decomposition, which like comes from this, this um, decomposition, you know? Um, and so we want to make sure that um, whenever these red and yellow red and gold things are have no common factors that we can always do this so this is um just our kind of quick motivation for the for our discussion about gcds now so let's get into this um first thing we want to know is that when you you know when you compute the gcd of a and b um like for example, the GCD of 15 and 10 is five. Now we want to know, of course, that means five, like that D divides both A and B. So you can divide them both by D, and then wouldn't it, wouldn't it be nice if the GCD of the, those new things were, were one? Okay, so that when you factor out the greatest common factor, the result has no common factors. Okay, so this proposition is just uh, reassuring us of that. Okay. And in the other direction, if you have uh, two numbers which have no common factors and you multiply them both by um, an integer d greater than or equal to 1, then the resulting GCD is just the factor you multiplied by. Okay, I don't want to, I mean, um, and I'm not going to spend too long on it, but the key to the proof is that we know we can write the GCD of A and B as a combination of A and B, right? So we can write AX plus BY equals D. Okay. Now, um, A over D and B over D, these are both integers, so just divide through by D and write it in this form. Now, that tells you that... Um, if C divides A over D and C divides B over D, then it has to divide one, right? So any common divisor of A over D and B over D divides one, that means the greatest common divisor of A over D and B over D is one, okay? And kind of like reversing the argument kind of gives you a similar result for this second part, okay. So that means you can factor out a common factor and the result has no common factors. Um, that's good. That means uh, the rigorous definition of GCD kind of agrees with our intuition, I guess. Okay. Um, so more about GCDs. Of course, um, we can define uh, the greatest common divisor of three s integers. Instead of just two integers, we can just look at the greatest common divisor of like three. 
or four or even more and we just do it the same way right like um, D is the greatest common divisor of A, B, and C if D divides all three, and any other divisor of all three numbers also divides D. Okay. Um, now we come to our proposition, and this lets us this prop this is the proposition which which lets us um you know relate the factorization like the factorization of a number to the factorization of its divisors. Okay, so we're going to suppose that the GCD of A, B, and C is 1. As an example, like this can happen in a lot of ways, but like one example might be, um, you know, A might be 15, B might, might be 10, and C might be 6. Okay. Um, right, so each two of them is not, is not has a common factor, but all three of them have no common factor, right? Because 2 divides like B and C, but 2 doesn't divide 15, for example. 3 divides A and C, but it doesn't divide 10. 5 divides A and B, but it doesn't divide 6, you know, and so on. So these three numbers have GCD1. And then what we see is that the GCD of the product A times B with C is the same as the GCD of A and C times the GCD of B and C. So as long as all three numbers have no common factors, meaning, um, yeah, so as long as the GCD of all three is one, then you can factor the GCD as a product the GCD of A, B as a product of, the GCD of A, B, and C with, as a product of GCD of A and C, GCD of B and C. Okay, so let me just try and take you through a little bit of the proof. So we're gonna write the GCD of A and C as E, the GCD of B and C as F. And now notice that the GCD of E and F is one because if a number divides E, it divides A and C. If a num number divides F, it divides B and C. So a number that divides both E and F divides A, B, and C. So in other words, it divides one. Okay, so E and F have no common factors. Okay, also we can write E as a combination of A and C. So we can write E as AX plus CY for some integers X and Y. You can do the same for f let's say bu plus cv gives you f and of course now ef well that's just some big product and you can multiply it out and write it as ab times xu plus c times some mess here some integer okay now if d is the gcd of ab with c then d divides ab d divides c so d divides a ef Okay, so the GCD of A, B, and C, sorry, the GCD of A, B with C divides E, F. Okay, now we just need to show that um, E, F divides A, B, and E, F divides C. Then E, F will also divide D, so then E, F will actually equal D. Okay, notice that E divides A and F divides B, so E, F divides A, B. And so the trick is we have to show that EF divides C. Of course, E divides C and F divides C, but maybe like um, their product doesn't, you know? Like for example, six divides six and six divides six, but six squared does not divide six. Just as a silly example. Okay, so we have two numbers that divide C, but we wanna show that the product divides C. Okay, so first write C is f times k. We know that is true because um, f divides c. Okay, but also e divides c. So writing c as f times k, we see that e divides fk. Now the GCD of e and f is 1, so e divides k. Okay, but if e divides k, then ef divides kf. In other words, ef divides c, and that's the end of the proof. Okay, and this last part is 
the proposition which tells us that if the GCD of M and N is 1, then a divisor of MN can be written uniquely as D times E, where D divides M and E divides N. Okay. Oh, oh, also, um, it's clear that if D is a divisor of M and E divides N, then DE divides MN with no conditions on M and M, but we're trying to get a converse to that. So this lets us you know, if, if we have a factorization of mn, you know, into m times n, then that lets us also factorize all the divisors of mn. Okay. So let's see what to do. Well, let's take a divisor of mn and write it as, we'll write d to be the GCD of d, the divisor, with m, and e to be the GCD of d with n, and what we want to show is that d times e equals d. Okay, and notice that since d divides mn, the GCD of d with mn is just d. But also, since m and n have no common factors, the GCD of d with m with n is 1. So that means the GCD of d with mn is just the GCD of d with m times GCD of G d with n. In other words, d times e. So this shows that d equals d times e. And notice, like by definition, d divides m and e divides n. And then um, the uniqueness is uh, kind of, I'll, I'll leave it as an exercise. But it's also in the notes if you really want to know. and thank you for watching this video um, you know any questions let me know please